everybody, it's me, Courtney, and today we're going to talk about the art of taking a loss. September 7th, around mm, 6, 7 p.m., my house caught on fire. So maybe two weeks prior, I told my landlord that the outlets in the living room were sparking. He came over, tried to fix them, they were still sparking. You know, we go to this practice. The next thing you know, it's a fire in the living room. So really, everything in the living room burnt up. Not even everything, it was just this corner, but it was so much smoke damage that it's pretty much a total loss. I mean, my kids' stuff was fine, my stuff was fine, but, you know, then the landlord boarded up the windows, and it was already a dark place, so it was wet, it was damp, it was muggy, it was smoky, and it was just sucking all of that shit in, holding it in, so... I mean, I was able to try and save some stuff, but for the most part, it was a total loss. So, I've been in my mom's house for the past week, and it's been a week too long. Man, like, I've definitely been, like, on the crib search. I was trying to be out, like, last week. So, I mean, especially having children and working and trying to move stuff, and it's just a lot. And then dealing with your moms, acting like your moms, the same way she acted when you were in school, it's just not... It's not where you want to be. This is not where I want to be right now. It's definitely starting over. It is an L for sure, for sure. So, I mean, a lot of people, they're saying that you should just leave everything, just start over. It has smoke damage, things like that. Just leave all the furniture because it's going to have smoke damage. Fuck that. We're going to take some of that. We're going to the toddler beds. Probably have to leave the mattresses and couches and all that. I'm leaving a good majority of stuff. I really am. So it's like I'm taking the toddler beds. One of the toddler mattresses is wrapped in plastic. I'm trying to take all the kids' dressers, my son's mattress. I mean, his his bed frame was fabric, so we probably won't take that. And I'll probably take my whole bedroom set. And then my mom was saying to start over, but psh, ain't nobody starting over. Even my orange chair is still good. I'm going to need that joint. That's, I like orange. It's my favorite color. I'm going to need it. So, you know, a couple weeks prior, I told him that, around the end of August, I told him that it was electrical issues in the living room that one of the outlets kept sparking and he came by he caught himself fixing it but it was still sparking now the outlet where the fire started where i had my altar plugged up at he said he didn't work on that outlet but i told the police and i told the fire department what had happened and you know how i disclosed uh, information to him how it was still sparking they went and checked it out and they let me know like hey this is not on you you know he tried to blame you it's not on you not at all so I hit him up, like, so are you going to pay me for this stuff? I mean, and I always get renter's insurance. Get renter's insurance. I get it every time I move. This time, within these two months I've been here, I did not get renter's insurance. Not at all. I didn't even think about it. It didn't even cross my mind. And then the time you don't fucking get it, it's a fire. I was like, no, you know I would have got renter's insurance for like $10,000. <sighs> what the fuck? So... I mean, it's like a full L. And when I go, I went to Walmart. I went to go get some Tyvek jump outfits. Because every time you go in there, your clothes come out with ash and stuff. You come out super dirty, hands super black. So the uh, cashier was like, what are these? I'm like, oh, little Tyvek outfits. My house caught on fire. So I need these so my clothes don't get dirty when I go in there. And I mean, I guess I was smiling. She was like, but you're still smiling. You seem happy. I'm like, I mean, it is what the fuck it is. I mean, I'm not finna sit around and just cry all day about it. It's like, I've, I haven't cried at all. I think when I was talking to my children's dad about it, and I was talking about how people just feel like, oh, you're handling so well. I think I shed like a tear or two, because I was just like, he was like, yeah, you are. But, I mean, I feel like when we take losses, you can't just sit around and dwell on the shit and cry and... I mean, the shit hurts. Like, niggas definitely have to start over. And I'm looking for a crib. And I'm at my mama house. Like... At any time, she could kick me out. She's been kicking me out since I was, like, 16. And any time I've come back, I've been kicked out. Like, even with a kid and all types of stuff. So, maybe with me having three kids, probably not. But I don't even want to wait the long. I'm trying to... I want to move, like, last week, right after the fire happened. I was trying to find somewhere open immediately. But I probably have to wait till the first. But L's. I mean, you just got to chuck that shit up and just take it for what it is and keep moving. I mean, it's like... Who has time to cry and whine and bitch about it? It's like, I don't even complain about this shit anymore. I didn't complain when it happened. Everybody was like, you all right? You good? It's like, yeah. You know, me and my kids weren't there. You know, I still have some furniture that I can try and salvage. But for the most part, it is what the fuck it is. I mean, it is what it is. And I mean, mo- I've taken a lot of losses in my life. Like, people stealing shoes. People stealing all my clothes. And having to just always... I've had to start over from scratch. 
a couple times in my life, like starting from like high school when I was getting kicked out. So, I mean, maybe that's why I handle losses so well also because I've been taking L's for a while and I don't know. It's just like, man, it is what the fuck it is. The universe going to throw what it's going to throw at me. I'm going to bounce back and we're going to continuously play this game until my time is up, till this time is up. So, I mean, just keep fucking pushing. It's like, who, we ain't got time to be breaking down all this other shit and anxiety attacks. Fuck all that. Just, just got to look at it and be like, man, at least you got to look at the upside. You know, I look at the upside and I'm like, at least I have the type of job now where I can replace all this furniture and still, you know what I'm saying, be good. I had the type of landlord that gave me all my rent back and my security deposit. So it made it even easier to move because I got all the moving cash without having to dip into my paycheck. Like, I could be a caregiver still, only getting checks that are like $800. And shit would definitely be tough then with three children and a weak-ass $800 check. That that would not be working for my life. So you always got to look at the upside, look at the positives, and look at how things are going better. And then it's like you talk to other people. You know, everybody I know was complaining about their issues and telling me their problems, what they was going through. And then, like, all of a sudden, with you, like, oh, yeah, my house is going to fire I'm back in mom's crib. And they're like, damn, you know, I'm thinking I'm going through something and it could be worse. Mother, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You always have things could be worse. And it's like, I always, I'm not tripping because it could be worse. Like, my mom's couldn't be around. We could be fucked up and homeless. We could be at a shelter. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of times I wake up for third shift for work and I just be laying there like, Courtney, I'm tired. I don't want to go in. But it's like, you know what? If you was homeless and unemployed, you could sleep all motherfucking day the street you could be under your box and you could be wrapped up with some dirty ass blanket and you sleep all day and it's like you know what let's get up Courtney how about we go to work and go make this little money so just always try to it's all about your mindset I mean and you control the way you think about things whether you want to just be positive or you want to be a negative fucking Nancy you control all of that so I mean it's on you your situations could be way worse than what they are right now. It could be way worse tomorrow. And, I mean, you always need to look on the upside of how it could be worse than what the fuck it is. I mean, you might wake up tomorrow and your car got stolen. But, shit, you still got your money in your bank account. You still got a job that can get you another car. You could be a person that's unemployed and you can't get another car. You know what I'm saying? So, try to find the upside to it. Try to find the positives. And should it be all right? It's going to work itself out. It's going to be cool. If you believe in the universe and that the universe got you, it got you. So it was like, don't need to trip on that shit. It's going to be all right. But make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to try and shoot some videos before I go to sleep because Courtney's been slacking. And we obviously know why now because Courtney's house caught on fire. And she still has kids to take care of and football games and work. And yeah, it's just a whole bunch of shit. So we're going to try and record some videos. So y'all might see this outfit, this look right here in like two or three future videos because they were all recorded back to back. That's good. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. And I'll be back with more videos. Bye.